Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Mixed Martial Arts Edition. Today, we're going to be talking about what just went down at UFC 274 with our MMA expert, Mr. Chuck Marlowe. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing today, Martin? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. For the people, if you're not following Chuck on Twitter for the UFC fights, make sure you do that because, man, we had a weekend for combat sports, not just in UFC, but also in boxing as well. But Chuck, man, UFC 274 just happened on the 7th. There was a lot that went down. So let's go through this card, talk about some of the fights, some things that led into the fight, people not making weight. Let's just get right into it. All right, let's get it. So, yeah, so go ahead, Chuck. Oh, no, it's was, was, was you, my bad. No, I was going to say, where do you want to, do you want to start? Let's start with the weigh-in, the weigh-in controversy. Oh, yeah, the weigh-in. Okay, so, huh. all right. Yeah, that's nothing new. I mean, if, for people who've been following the sport for a while now, they know that this is not Oliveira's first time missing weight. This is his fifth or sixth time, I think, um, missing weight. Um, in the UFC. So this is something that's been a problem for him in the past. I just thought that by now we would have gone, we would have been past this stage in his career. I thought that he would love that belt and hold that belt so dear and near to his heart that he would not lose it over something as simple as weight. Yes, I heard there was a controversy about the scale. Maybe the scales were off or something like that. And I mean, it was only 0.5 pounds, so I can understand that differential in weight. So I can see where people could say it could be the scales. It could not be. Um, when it's something by that small of a margin of error, it leads you to think, what could it have been? Could it have been him? Could it have been the scales? Could it have been a lot of different things? And then to have the title vacated because of weight makes everyone start bringing up, oh, well, what about Khabib when he had um, that instance with a whole weight thing and stuff like that? And he, they're like, oh, well, Oliveira doesn't have Dana White privilege. Well, it's true. He doesn't. Um, if you're not his favorite fighter, as in Khabib, Connor, John Jones, the DCs, like the people who he knows when he, they come back, he's going to just give them whatever they want. He doesn't have that right now with Dana. Um, but he showed Dana why he should. <laughs> he showed Dana why he should have Dana White privilege. So when a person doesn't make weight, Chuck, for people who don't know, what is – what does that mean? And do they get fined? Like what happens if you don't make weight? So there's two rules. There's a few different options that can happen when you don't make weight. So they can decide, Hey, you didn't make weight. Like we're not going to have this fight or, Hey, we're going to do a catch weight fight, uh, fight, which basically is like, all right, we're just going to kind of let it happen. You know, we're going to let it roll and we're just going to do the fight anyway. But when it's a circumstance like this with the title, the title gets vacated. So only one person can win the title. So the only person who could have won the belt that night was Justin Gaethje, in which he didn't. So um, a situation like that, it's kind of very just, it's a very sticky situation because when you have a champion who loses the belt, not due to losing, it makes you think, okay, he should still have the belt. And Oliveira that night showed he should definitely still have the fucking belt because I, I, don't, I don't know. How else to describe it? I think I said it on Twitter. There's only one word I can use to describe Charles Oliveira, relentless, because that was a man on a mission. He knew with all the controversy, all the different hype, all the different stuff going into this fight, a lot of the drama and controversy. He said, you know what? Put all that shit to the side. I'm going to show them why I need this belt. I'm going to show them why I deserve to have this damn belt. He, I never seen someone just, he, he got knocked down like two, three times, took hella punches from Justin Gaethje, who is, oh my, like the most powerful puncher I've seen in a long, like he's like a, Mike, a mini Mike Tyson, if you want to start putting it into categories like that, because this man packs a fucking punch, I swear. Like the way he just swings, like there's a few swings you saw him just throw for the fences. He fell on the floor because he was putting all his power into his punches, like. And the fact that Oliveira ate two or three of those and got up and still came back and choked this man out, 
really goes to show that this man has another type of level of heart. He just has nothing but heart right now. And he wants his belt back. Like it was just relentless. That was the last match. So we'll get to that when we get to that point. But now with that out of the way, let's move on. So what happened with the Donald and Joe fight? It got canceled? So Donald Sharon ended up backing out last second due to some health um, issues. Some, uh, it was some type of sickness or something that he had where he couldn't fight. It wasn't COVID related, but he couldn't perform due to it. So they ended up moving Randy Brown and Chaos Williams to the main card, which I'm honestly, I was so excited and so happy that they did. No one, not too many people know about Randy Brown. Um, mm -hmm. Chaos Williams are kind of smaller names. They're, uh, but they're people that are on the rise. I would definitely keep an eye on Randy Brown. Chaos Williams too. I know he lost, but he showcased why he should also be up there with them because he, he put um, Randy Brown in some danger. But once Randy Brown started getting loose and letting things go, he was, I just love his style. He's a 6'3 welterweight. So he has a tall, lanky frame. But Chaos Williams has more of a stocky, built, powerful frame. So he has power shots. But he showed his, but Randy Brown showed his elusiveness, his striking ability. He was just so crisp and so fast and his footwork and his movement his head movement was just so clean. I just, Randy Brown is going to be electrifying if he can put everything together and um, start getting some grappling down and getting everything else. If once he becomes a complete package, he's going to be one of those fighters where you're like, damn, I, I have to, this is must watch TV. Okay. Because, yeah, he came out on top in a decision in the third round. Uh, Randy goes to 15 4 and 0, and Williams goes to 13 3 and zero from the welterweight division you move up then and you have mario Cio, Rua, 27 13 and one man he's been fighting for a long time against avinix yeah. saint how do you say his last name saint pru yep saint pru and saint pru came out on top chuck what do you think of that fight so their combined age when going into this fight 79 uh, mauricio Jeez. shogun rua has been in the UFC since I was a baby. This man has, he's so, it's very, very rare that you see fighters announce that they're going to retire and have this many fights left. And this was his second to last fight and his next fight will be his last fight. So honestly, it was an honor watching those two face off again and um, face off in the cage. But it was just a fight of two old men, honestly, in the cage. I mean, there's some good things about it and there's some bad things about it. Obviously, St. Prue is a lot faster. Mauricio, at this point in his career, is very just old. He's slow. He's not the same Mauricio that we saw fighting against John Jones um, and like the Leota Machitas and all the other different fighters at that time. He, used to, he, does, he has done a lot for the UFC and he has done a lot for this sport. So I was very disappointed and the fact that there was fans booing in the fight because these are two legends fighting. These are two people who have done a tremendous amount for the UFC and for people to just boo them. I, they're, obviously, they're not at their peak. They're not at their prime. They're not going to put on an electrifying performance at this point in their careers because they don't have that in them. But you just got to enjoy what's in front of you while it's there. I think that's what I did when I was watching it. And it was just two older fighters just getting after it a little bit, just scrapping it out. But um, it will be sad to see when we see um, Shogun go. But um, it was a, all in all a decent fight. Next fight is probably the fight that got everyone talking. I, I took over social media by storm and everyone was going nuts. Chandler, Tony Ferguson, the knockout heard around the world. Chuck, when you were watching this, when you were watching this fight, and you saw that kick, what did you think? It was a chicken nugget. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that's a side joke to Conor McGregor. But, oh my gosh, when I saw that kick, if you, you can ask Carly, when I saw that kick, my jaw dropped to the floor. I, I never had, a, I don't think I've ever had a jaw dropping moment in my life before, but I can finally understand when someone said that made my jaw drop. Like it literally made my jaw drop. My mouth was open for like, Three minutes. I was just in shock and in awe because it was such a beautiful 
kick straight up the middle, right down the pipe. And it was just, it was something of beauty. When you talk about the Anderson Silvas, when you talk about karate specialists, like that was just, and no one, that's the thing is, no one expects that from Michael Chandler. He's a D, division one wrestler and a powerhouse haymaker thrower. Like no one expects that from him. And for him to come out there and just, he's like, he said, he saw the opening. He said, you know what? I was going to throw an uppercut, but he's decided to throw that up kick up there. And he just, boom, it's like he punted the man's head off. It looked like he was fucking just, I don't, I don't understand what he was trying to do there, but he tried to kick his head off and he almost did. I, to never see Tony Ferguson get knocked out before and to see him get knocked out like that, it hurt my heart, honestly, because I feel for Tony Ferguson. He was doing good in the first round and he was really showcasing his abilities and the skills. He got taken down in the last like two minutes and 30 seconds and was getting dominated a little bit on the ground, but he was throwing elbows and doing damage from his back, which was good. And when he was standing up, he was doing really good as well. So it hurts to see him go out like that. But like, oh my gosh, for Michael Chandler, for a guy of such a good character like himself, that was great to see for him. Finally, he got his bounce back win after losing his last two. Um, so it was good to see that for him. But when I saw that kick, oh my gosh, I, I was just like, I was in shock and in awe. It was such a beautiful kick. Of such a, that's the moment that we, we want to live for the fans. That's the moment that everyone wants to do for the fans. And so I feel really well for Michael Chandler. That's great. And then he also had the speech that got a lot of people's attention, his uh, post-fight speech. What'd you think of the speech? Call out to Conor McGregor. Like, what'd you think of that? I think he should be in the WWE with his promotion skills. Um, <laughs> the way he went after with the, he worked the mic. I don't know if Dana told him to do it. I don't know if I, 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 so I have conspiracy in my mind that Dana was already like, all right, maybe, Hey, I don't, I don't know. This is just, this is just me thinking out on a limb that Dana said, Hey, Charles miss weight by 0.5 because that's a small margin to miss weight by. And maybe he said, hey, lose weight because, I mean, miss uh, weight. Um, so that way we can vacate the title. So that way we can have this little, this hype basically right now around the lightweight division. There's a lot of hype around it right now because you have Charles Oliveira, Justin Gaethje, Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor. I think he uh, kind of wanted to build a little bit of hype around that division because he's starting to build hype around all of this division. I think that call out, was to try and get Connor back. Because Connor, as you can see, he's been working out. He's priming himself. He's trying to get back in good, like, fighting shape. And Connor responded. He said, that was a great kick, great fight. I would love to see you in the ring in the future. So he obviously is trying to work some comeback, and he's trying to work some box off his hips right now. So I think the call out was executed phenomenally if um, Chandler's trying to move up and stay at the top of the division. And I think that we're going to see a fight between some of those names that I threw out sometime near in the future. Do you think, so you, do you think the call out is going to work? Like is Connor, cause I, I mean, we'd bring him up, but no one knows when he's going to come back and fight. Let's just be honest. Do you think this will be the one that gets him back? I think potentially if he, if Chandler keeps running his mouth and he does enough, you can tick off um, Connor McGregor. It's pretty easy to piss. Conor McGregor off. Short fuse, Irish man. If you just keep talking and you keep barking at him, the dog eventually is going to try and bite. So I think Chandler did a good job there because all the hype's around his name right now and all the build up from that kick that got a lot of people's attention. So if he keeps calling him out and he keeps doing what he's doing, he can get a lot of people's eyes on that and get a lot of box office hits. And Dana will set it up because Dana. He likes money. He said, oh, you just got a highlight knockout. Ooh, you just got your ass kicked by Dustin Poirier and a lot of other people. Why not throw you in the ring? You're my one of my top fighters from a while back, and you're one of my top fighters now. Let me get you in here and get some box office hits. Fair enough. Fair enough. Then you go up to the co-main event with Rose versus Carla Esperanza, and Esperanza comes out on top in the decision in the fifth round. Chuck, was that surprising? For you, did you have Rose? Did you have Carla? What'd you think? I gotta change my daughter's middle name as well. I think um, <laughs> for you, for no, for anyone who doesn't know, I named my uh, daughter's middle name Rose after Thug Rose, Nama, um, Nama Yunus, and 
I am extremely highly pissed off and disappointed. I don't, I understand what her corner was saying. I understand everything they were talking about. I think it was somewhat of a good game plan, but I think she should, she played overly defensive. And as you've seen in fights with Israel Adesanya and Yoel Romero and other different fights like they were talking about, like DC and John Anik and Joe Rogan said last night, that fight was a dud. It was a dud and it was a terrible fight. And it was probably one of the worst fights in UFC history. And I feel bad because that draws away our, draws away our fans. And I feel bad because Carla Esperanza, she won that belt, but everyone's like, that was a terrible fight. No one deserved to win the belt. And I feel bad for her because that's her moment to shine. And that's her moment. She has her wedding coming up and she has all this negative talk coming from all these different things and stuff with the fight. So I do feel bad for her in that aspect, but I don't feel bad for Rose because I just feel like that was her fight to lose. And she fought her fight to lose. Like she didn't play aggressive at all. She was overly defensive, too worried about the takedowns and the wrestling of Esparza. I mean, Esparza. And so she just, she lost, she whipped. She just didn't, her striking obviously was a lot better and she was a lot more high level of a striker than her, but she just wasted her time running from takedowns and being scared of takedowns. And you saw that takedown she had in the last 10 seconds of the final round. And she got so pumped up and pissed off. I'm like, why are you pumped up and excited for that takedown? Like you did something good. That's the highlight. That was the best thing you did of the night. And it was the last 10 seconds of the fight. And she, she just fought like she didn't know that she was losing. She didn't, she fought a fight to lose. I, don't, I just, I'm just extremely disappointed. In that. Where do they go from here? Um, obviously there's going to be a part three for them fighting because Rose has lost to Sparza twice now. Um, and that one was hard to judge. I mean, no one can really judge that fight. That was a terrible fight. Both fighters, there wasn't enough volume. There wasn't enough to judge. There wasn't enough to sit there and really actually make a great decision to. That's why it was a split decision. And the fact is, no one, no one can really tell who won that fight. So they're going to obviously go for a part three. Um, that will happen soon. Who knows how soon from now. But I expect Rose to come out there like an animal and come out there like a man on a mission like Charles Oliveira did and go and get her belt back. So we talked about the main event. You, we've already talked about Oliveira and Gaethje. Oliveira called out Connor too when he won in the first round submission. So, yeah. So now you got two people on the same pay per view calling out Connor. But first, where do where do they go from here? Because Oliveira has to get his belt back because technically he doesn't have the belt now, right? Yeah. So that's that's and that's the sticky situation of this now is where do you go from here? So you have Oliveira who just lost his belt. You have fighters calling each other out. You have a lot of people who have recently fought for the belt in the lightweight division. And you're like, all right, well, who gets the next shot? Because, like, you have all these different um, people, and you're like, who gets the next shot at the belt? Who, who do you want next? And so I think it's kind of a – it's a win-win for Dana, honestly, because he's like, man, I have options. But at the same time, it's kind of a loss of a situation because you have too many options. Because what do you do? You throw Dustin in there again against Charles, he already lost. You throw Gaethje against Charles, he just lost. But I see Islam Makachev, he's in the rise. He's on the um, rise, and I can see them maybe throwing him versus Oliveira for the belt since Oliveira just lost the belt technically, but he didn't lose the belt, if you get what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. so I can see them going him versus Islam, and then the winner of that goes against Connor, or I mean Connor versus Chandler, and the winner of that. So... I think that's pretty much where Dana goes from that. I see that Neil Dariush is maybe in that conversation, but I just feel like he doesn't have enough hype around his name right now to get him up there to that level. Overall, what do you rate this pay-per-view? You know, it's a hard one to rate because of all the – you have the weight loss. Like, I mean, not the weight loss. The, you have the weight situation. You have the dud of a fight for the co-main event. You have – the main event, which was phenomenal, you have the third fight, which was Chandler and um, 
Tony Ferguson, which was a great fight. So I think overall there was a lot of great fights on that card, but you have all the controversy around it. So all in all, I'd give it like an 8.5 out of 10 because without those little different things here and there, you take that dud fight out of there and you put like a, a Rose versus Zhang Wali um, type of fight in there, then that's a 10. That's a 10 out of 10 card, and I guarantee everyone would have been happy and everyone would have been talking about it. If you take out the weight, weight controversy in the belt situation, I feel like it doesn't really do too much to it to affect it, but I feel like that drops it down kind of by 0. 0.5. So, okay, okay. So now we're UFC going to 275. Where are they going from here? So, um, yeah, 275 is going to be Glover Texera versus Jiri Prochaka. Um, Prochaka. I can never pronounce his name right. right? That one's going to be – so, light heavyweight division. Ever since John Jones has left, it's been kind of, you know, eh. But I think Jiri might be one of the guys in that division to really make some noise and hold the belt for a little while. Um, he's coming off a lot of the, uh, wins. I think the guy – honestly is he's just I don't know, he's just a freak specimen he's like a viking and he's just i think texera is i mean he's pretty old it's we're glad to see him finally get the belt you know let's round of applause for that but i don't think he's going to hold it against jerry i think jerry's just another you know those people who have just that relentless that relentlessness to him like olivera has i think he's going to go after this belt because this is his opportunity and he's going to dominate and he's just going to try and take his head off pretty much is that the next biggest pay-per-view or is there one in the pipeline coming that's even um, bigger? 276 okay obviously in the pipeline but there's some other fights on that 275 like you got valentina shevanko versus talia santos shevanko obviously will dominate because shevanko is just nuts like always and then you have zang wali versus joanna jadiziak part two Mm -hmm. after you seen that last fight that they had that went down that was actually in the ufc history books now it's um in the ufc hall of fame is one of the greatest title fights ever so for them to have a part uh two on this card i think this card is actually going to turn out to be a very 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 good card i'm looking at the rest of these fights on here there's i think that card might be in contention for the card we just watched last week honestly the more i look at it okay 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 um, another thing, looking at now, I went to see two seventy six. I see you got Misha Tate on there. You got Max Holloway on here. This is, I mean, you got Robbie Lawler on here. Like you got some names that like casual fans will uh, tune in for, and obviously Israel uh, main eventing. So it's and when is where is that going to be taking place at? I think that one. I, I'm I'm not sure if it's still to be determined. I think it's actually going to be in Las Vegas. I don't know why. So when you go onto the um, website for UFC, if you take a look at it, uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't show the two uh, the actual main event because they haven't yet signed their contracts. But yeah, it's it's going to be in Las Vegas. The main event's going to be Israel Adesanya versus Jared Canier, um, which I think well, that's going to be a good fight. Um, I'm being honest. Jared has knockout power and raw athleticism. That man is just like when you think about like Kamara Usman, Francis Ngannou, just like raw rip, just pure strength. And mm -hmm. Izzy skinny, so like I don't, I don't know. I, I like that matchup, and I think it's going to be a pretty. It's going to play out pretty well. So um, that one's going to be really good. Then you have Max Holloway versus Volkanovski part three. I'm just hoping Max can get the belt back, and I hope Max can win. Um, it, it, Volkanovski showed in his last fight against Korean Zombie that he's just on another level because that fight, they had to stop the fight. Like, they literally caught off the fight while they were standing up. Like, they basically threw in the towel for the Korean Zombie because Volkanovski showed he's just on, a, he's on another level than these other fighters. And him and Max are the only two – at that in that division that can actually fight each other and be entertaining and actually be like okay who won this fight those are big things chuck i just saw an article too that dana white's gonna they're gonna have security guards guarding the scale like is it that is it that serious that we need to hire a security guard 
it covers scales now? Yeah, you know, Dana being Dana, he wants to avoid controversy. And um, there's a lot of controversy around that whole weight situation now. So, you know, now that he also stopped fighters from coming out with their um, home nation flags, he no longer can carry a flag out into the octagon. Um, so Dana's, Dana's uh, tightening up. And even though he was already tightened up, he's tightened up more. And um, I don't think that's sitting well with too many UFC fighters. And I don't think it's going to sit too well for too long. I don't think it's sitting too well with ESPN either. And I see some things, some changes down the line in like the next two, three years to Dana. Look, anything else going on UFC-wise at the very moment in time? Um, I just want to get into a few other things on this mm-hmm. UFC 276 card because, man, I'm looking and it's packed. You have Alex Pereira versus Sean Strickland in the middleweight. Mm-hmm. If no one who know, if anyone who doesn't know, Alex Pereira is one of the best Muay Thai strikers ever. He made his UFC debut probably about four or five months ago. Um, he is one of the only people to beat Israel Adesanya, and he's fighting on the same card as Adesanya. So if he whoops Sean Strickland, don't be surprised to see a call out to Izzy and don't be surprised for an Izzy versus Alex Pereira um, fight happening right after he retains the belt. Wow. Okay. That's big. Calling that how I see it. I, I can definitely see that being in the works already. That is big. That is big. Anything else? Um. John Jones, keep an eye out. Uh, that's all I got to say to that. Oh, John Jones? He's been making a lot of noise recently. He's been making better noise than what he usually makes. He hasn't been like saying things on Twitter. It's more proactive. Um, so him versus... So I, I listened to a funny thing. It seems like they're targeting him versus Stipe Miocic in the heavyweight division, probably around September. So look forward to that. He's probably being called out soon. Because Dana said he's down to do it, and then John Jones said he's willing to wait for Stipe to get in good shape. Stipe is down to do it, so I can see that fight happening in September. Okay. Other than that, there's a few. There's not too much else going on in the um, UFC right now. Just a lot of fights starting to get in. Cormier in the Hall of Fame. That was official. That was a good video. I saw that happen. Yeah. um, That was actually a very touching moment. I'm not a big... See, since I'm I, since I was a John Jones fan, I had a very anti DC personality. Um, I hated DC, but I can actually appreciate what DC has done for the UFC, and yes. that was a very good moment for him, and that was very electrifying for him. I'm very happy for him, and that I, he's one who deserves to go down in the history book, and he deserves to be there in the uh, Hall of Fame. So I can't wait for him to get fitted for his jacket and get put in there. So with the UFC Hall of Fame, is it like the other Hall of Fames where, like, let's say you've had some controversy? So is Dana the only one who makes the decision on who's in the Hall of Fame? Like a WWE, like a Vince McMahon? I'm actually not 100% sure. I think it's voted somewhat on by the peers, plus some of the alumni and then a few other things that are weighted into there. I think controversy is somewhat brought into it, but like I don't think controversy is brought into it that much because you got to think it's UFC fighters. There's controversy around a lot of them, honestly. A lot of them have CTE brain, as I like to call it. So they a lot of them make mistakes. So a lot of them still can get in. I guess for like when you have like you brought his name up, obviously talent wise, if this was the NFL, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. But the stuff that he like John Jones, this was the NFL. They'd keep him out for a bit because of his controversies and all that stuff. What do you think? USC is just going to just let him Oh, yeah, do? they'll definitely get him. And he's already in um, – well, one of his fights are in the UFC Hall of Fame. Um, him versus Alexander uh, Gustafsson. Okay. Um, that fight's in the Hall of Fame already. So that's when he got in trouble, actually, was right after he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was that same night when him and his wife got into the thing. and. So, yeah, they'll still give John Jones into the Hall of Fame for sure, probably. I don't see them not doing it. Um, controversy is nothing to Dana. What about, you know, age-old paying the, paying the people, paying the fighters? That's always still a thing. Do you think they'll ever unionize? Well, it's always brought up. 
every interview that I see, like I just saw uh, just gonna... George St. Pierre talk about it. Like, hey, they need to unionize. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And you're going to get there eventually. It just depends. The thing is, a lot of people want to want to provide for their family, so they're scared to do it. And I think that's where the problem is with a lot of UFC fighters. They want they want to provide for their family because a lot of them, this is a paycheck. This is what they. This is all they have. So, I think at some point we'll get there, but I don't think right now they will. I think um, ESPN is going to help them get towards there, probably towards helping out the fighters and everything, but I don't think they're going to be there yet. Um, you look at you look at the PFL, for example. They just had an event this past, um, this weekend on Saturday, too. Kayla Harrison from Middletown, Ohio, undefeated. She'd be great in the UFC. She would tear up Amanda Nunes, I feel like. I feel like that would be a great fight to see. Amanda, like, I feel like if someone would give her a run for her money and make it look really bad, it would be Amanda, be Kayla Harrison. You look at fighters like her who sit there like, well, he's not paying people. He's not paying his fighters. There's no insurance. There's no this. There's no that. So they go out to other promotions and they seek out better pay and better opportunities. Chris Cyborg in Bellator, she's sitting there getting paid a lot of money to go travel around the world, do a lot of events, have better insurance. Um, but she didn't want to stick around. There's a lot of fighters who seek out other promotions that are really good fighters because you look at Michael Chandler. He was in Bellator for a long time until he came over to the UFC. But, like, the pay was better for him there and the opportunities and the insurance and all these other different things were better there and other promotions. So Dan's going to lose people and he's going to gain people at the same time because UFC has a better name and holds a lot more weight. So it's win, lose it. There's wins and losses to it. And I think that Dana at some point needs to clear his head and actually help his fighters. But we're not this, we're not there yet. Okay. Chuck, man, go ahead, plug the stuff, and we'll close it out. Um, shout out to uh, Bevol for uh, whooping Canelo's ass, by the way. This, uh, oh, that weekend. is true. A lot of people did not see Canelo losing, and that was a shocker. I saw Bevol was undefeated. I had a feeling, but I didn't think it was going to happen like that. I thought it would have been a closer fight. Um, but, yeah, Bevol, him and Floyd Mayweather, the only people to beat Canelo. Mm-hmm. Um that man's about to get paid some serious dough. Some serious dough. Boxing money is oh, boxing money. Now that's some money. We want to talk about people getting paid. Boxing money is money. Um, we'll never get there in the UFC. Um, but yeah, that was a huge fight this past weekend. Okay. 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 Um, well, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. Thank you, Chuck, for being our MMA expert even though this will be coming out after the fact this day did just happen, but happy mother's day to all of the mothers um, out there. And if you saw our Twitter, obviously we had to shout out one of our own Mrs. Carly Marlowe as the only mother on the L seven C had to definitely make sure we shouted her out for mother's day. Yes, sir. And with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L seven C podcast. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.